a U.S. youth national team veteran. He's already played in MLS, and I'm dubbing him the American Bruno. Our guest today, Marcelo Palomino. Appreciate you having me, Sasha. Hope everyone's well. I'm ready for this. Let's go. So you're at the Charlotte Independence. I put away my North Carolina FC jersey for this episode. Was that uh, was that the right uh, move? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, I got that because of uh, it had a nice Dreamville collab. Dreamville Fest is in Fayetteville, so yeah. No, I'm new to the rivalry, but but I'm bought in. So we we'll play them tomorrow. So oh wow, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, good stuff. So a bit of Charlotte Independence trivia. Do you know who the man riding the horse is on your crest? Absolutely not, but I'd love to know. <laughs> yeah, so that's Captain James Jack, who is said to have carried the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence to Philadelphia. It also relates to the 1775 on the crest, which is the year that uh, the Me- Mecklenburg Declaration was signed, which is supposedly the first ever Declaration of Independence made by the 13 colonies. I'm new to that, for sure. I'm not a big history guy. I'm more of a math guy, but... Uh... But that's good to know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I knew that. I had a Wikipedia <laughs> that part, but um, you give that to your to your teammates. Maybe they'll they'll learn that too. Yeah, for sure. So at this point, are you beginning to settle into Charlotte into the Independence, and are you feeling confident ahead of your season opener on May first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll start off by saying we got a great group of guys. Everyone gets along. Teams got some really talented guys, and although we've only been in preseason for a couple of weeks. And there's some new some new guys in the team, including myself. There's a lot of chemistry already that's been built up. And uh, I know we're all very confident and very excited to get started. As this is a loan deal, the hope is that you'll get plenty of experience before returning to Dynamo, the Houston. Is that your plan? You know, now that I'm here, first and foremost, I want to, you know, give everything I can to, to the independents, to give them my all and, you know, leave everything out there on the field. And obviously in the long term, it's the... Uh, win the championship, go as far as we can, and hopefully bring all the experience back to Houston, make myself just as, uh, you know, important and make a, you know, an impact for the team back at Houston as well. You made your uh, debut for Houston Dynamo in a uh, October 4th match against Kansas. Cross that season. October 3rd. October 3rd. Okay. Transfer market had that wrong. In that moment, you were actually called on to play by Tab Ramos and you went into the game. Uh, that, I mean, that was incredible. Obviously, a dream come true. To be honest, I didn't expect it at that very moment. Um, I've told this a couple of times. Uh, I remember warming up and, you know, obviously warming up, you always want to be ready. You know, Mm -hmm. you never know what could happen. Always want to be ready for anything. But uh, it wasn't really in my mind at that moment that, you know, I would be called on to come in. We were down uh, 2-0. You know, when I heard Tab call my name, along with Sam Junko, who's a good friend of mine, we were both warming up. He called our names and... I mean, I knew it was go time and, and, uh, I mean, I remember coming in, it's a little different, you know, with all the lights and stuff, you almost take a second. You're like, whoa, like, what, where am I? You know, there's a bunch of lights, the little billboards around and, um, but no, it was, it was a great experience. And actually I was very fortunate enough. I think I touched the ball like 13 times and uh, I didn't lose it once. I completed the 13 passes and uh, I felt like I had a good game. And I mean, I was very confident from the beginning, first time I stepped on the field and um, I knew I knew that, you know, this is what I'm meant to be doing. So I really appreciate the Dynamo for giving me that uh, that opportunity. In this game, you were up, were up against Gianluca Capustio, who was a U.S. national teammate, as well as seasoned professionals such as Winston Reed, who formerly played for West Ham. Though these guys are stars in the game, you can't really let yourself think this way as their opponent. No, I mean, obviously, and especially, you know, Gianluca, he's a good friend of mine. Um, I went to camp with him or he came, you know, he played up with uh with us with the old ones uh, he's a cool guy but you know you, you have some respect for them but once you step on the field i mean you kind of you you almost lose that you just you know it's a battle and it's whoever's going to come out on top and you forget that your friends or whatever like if i had to kick boost that game i would have kicked them <laughs> i'm sure he would have done the same thing yeah so some a phenomenon that i've experienced having having ball boy mls games during the game you know it's it's intense you you can't lose your focus for one second but the second that that final whistle goes off you know the team started to come together so like your, your boys you're talking with each other is that something that you felt maybe on that day with John Luca? yeah you know on the field and the whistle blows to start the game for 90 minutes you don't have any friends besides the 11 guys on your team and you know your staff and the guys on the bench and then you know after the game you know you're cool with your boys again and it's funny because actually in that game it, it got a little you know it got a little dirty and it was getting kind of scrappy uh, Minor Figueroa uh, from my team and Espinosa for the other team. Uh, I didn't know at the time, but they were really, really good friends and they played together for a long time. 
uh, and you know they were kicking each other, and they both got yellow cards. I think on each other, mm-hmm. where they were just going at it. And so after the game, I talked to Miner, and I, I asked him, I was like, "Hey, what's up with that? Like, y'all got beef or something?" He was like, "No, that's my brother." <laughs> but uh, you know, you would have never expected it, but um, huh? it's just it's just what happens. You gotta you gotta switch that when you on the field. One more thing I want to say on Houston Dynamo is I actually really like their their rebrand, this really slick hexagonal design. Do you have any thoughts on that new logo and maybe new vibe of the club? I've been I've been at the club for a while and I followed them for even longer. So uh, it took me a little bit to get used to. I was a big fan of the the OG one, but uh, this one's starting to grow on me, and uh, you know I like it as well. You think maybe it signals sort of maybe a new age potentially? Uh, I think so. I mean, uh, breath of fresh air, and we've we've all seen the players. We've all seen where like the the betting points and all that stuff where it has us ranked and whatever. Uh, so that definitely motivated all of us. Mainly just proved themselves that the last year wasn't. A clear reflection of who we are. Let's backtrack a bit into uh, what you previously mentioned before, the trials abroad in Europe. Between 2018 and 2020, you left Houston, became a free agent, and reportedly trialed at clubs like 1860 Munich and Porto. Tell us more about this time. Yeah, I went to Porto um, three times. That was my first uh, international trial. I don't know, I must have been 15 years old, I think, at the time. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, the three times I went, I did very well. And for some unfortunate reasons, I wasn't able to sign. And then 1860 Munich, uh, it was a very good experience as well. That was the last club I was with on trial before I signed with Dynamo. 1860 Munich is the team that I managed on my football manager save. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, uh, that's funny. Were there any other trials besides these? Yeah, I went on a couple. Of them. I went to Augsburg. I went to Offenbach, Porto, and then the clubs that I mentioned in Germany. Yeah, and they were, they were all good experiences. and. Oxford was, a, you know, a similar situation in Porto where I did extremely well and um, they actually really, really liked me. And for some unfortunate reasons, I wasn't able to sign. You know, everything happens for a reason. I wasn't able to sign over there, but some good things happened here and I'm in a very, very good situation here as well. Can you take us maybe on a, a deeper dive look on what it actually is like to be, you know, that trialist? Yeah, uh, I'll never forget Porto, I mentioned uh, just now, was, was my first trial, first international trial. First trial, really, period. That first day I got there, when I got dropped off at the clubhouse, I think that was the most nervous I ever was in my career. I wasn't nearly as nervous when, you know, in my debut when I was coming in. I wasn't nervous at all. Um, it was kind of one of those things where, you know, you're watching your team play on the TV or in the stadium, and you're more nervous on the outside because you can't really <laughs> do it. It was kind of one of those things. My parents came with me and my brother as well, but uh, obviously I wasn't able to stay with them. And it happened so quick where we got there and then the guy was like, okay, you know, here you are. And like, I, I had to say bye to my parents and, and my brother. And I went in, I didn't know anyone, obviously, you know, fortunately when I got to the field, everything just kind of came back to me and, and, you know, I felt right at home. So yeah, that, that was uh, definitely the most nervous I've ever been in, in my life. Time to talk some U.S. Youth National Team. You played with the under 16s, 17s, 18s, 20s, and you've got 19 official caps, but there's even more perhaps. You know, thank God. And I've been very fortunate to, I've been to every single camp for my cycle. I missed two camps, I think. One in Japan, one in France where I broke my foot. Besides that, I've been called to every single camp and never missed one. I'm very thankful to the Federation and, you know, everyone that played a part in that. Throughout your different camps and caps, you played with a ridiculously talented group of players. This segment, I'm going to name a player and then you're going to say what immediately comes to mind for them. It could be one word, a few, whatever feels right. And then we'll, we'll go from there. Ready? First player, let's go. Ulianas. Finesse shot coming in off the left side. Yeah, that's what I think. Of. Indiana Vasilov. Electric. He's, uh, we used to call him like the Energizer Bunny. You know, <laughs> the, the battery. Yeah, he's crazy. David Ochoa. Um, number one goalie I've played with. That's, you know, around my age. Conrad De La Fuente. Uh, Barca Caliber. <laughs> Owen on the Sally. Dominant, for sure. Serginho Dest. Absolutely filthy on the ball. Five moves, that's what I say. Taylor Booth. Taylor Booth. <laughs> Too many things. First thing I'd say is uh, just passing. Got clean, clean hits on the ball. How about Zach Booth? To be honest, the first thing that comes to my head is Lester. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I thought of. Flo Balogun. Powerful, pacey, and strong. Brian Reynolds. Flash, super, super fast. And then last one here, John Lucabusio. The hair, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a segment. I'm going to keep in for that. That was fun, yeah? Yeah, that was cool. I like that. 
out of all these guys uh, or even other players that you played with, has there been any player or player that have consistently impressed you in most of your U.S. camps? You know, all the guys, especially the ones that I kind of grew up playing with in the national team, seeing them become better players and seeing them kind of like having their talent kind of come out more each time and really seeing, you know, what they're capable of and stuff. And I think Taylor, Indy, um, Uli, first couple guys I mentioned, like how they started here and, you know, now they're in Europe and in some top clubs. And that's just to name a couple of guys. I mean, I could go on. The list is, is very long, but all those guys, how you just see like their progression is really cool to see and how, you know, they show why they're at that level. Do you have a player who you have in mind that maybe is next for an American who is up next for the uh, breakout season? I mean, the first one that comes to my head has a has a Troy hasn't been capped, is he? He was actually just at the uh, he was at the uh, the Olympic camp. Yeah, 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 not not first team yet. Yeah, yeah, it, it probably had to be him. Montreal is one of the most. I mean, he, I think he's the most talented goalie that that I've played with. Most of the other guys are already already there. So yeah, right. I mean, actually, I guess I say Taylor and India as well. They're not. They haven't you know, been called up yet too. So I know when their time comes, uh, that they'll be ready. They're they're very good players. All right, so let's take a little bit step back from the pitch now. You actually have a FIFA card, which is super cool. Do you play any at all? Yeah, I used to. I haven't played too much now, uh, but when I was playing, he was on the bench, and he made an appearance a couple of times. Uh, he was very bad, but uh, but we made it work. You you actually have a like I think it's sixty two rated bronze rare, which is kind of rare for for as your first card, I believe. It is. I, I don't know what they base it off of. And I don't know how they got that. I was 5'10", because I'm <laughs> definitely 5'7", 5'8", at that. But then Google has me at 5'5", five five, so I don't know. No one knows my height. On a good day, 5'10", and on a bad day, 5'5". Five five. <laughs> I'm 5'6", I'm so I, I feel it definitely. Did you ever, did you ever request, I know this year you probably could have, but you can get one of those 99 ready cards, the pro player ones? Yeah, I tried, but it's just like a long line of players trying to do it. You know, obviously the bigger players are going to probably get them first. So it was definitely, it's a definitely a tough process too. Throughout your life so far, whether it's on the pitch or off the pitch, do you have a favorite memory of the game? I've been playing for most of my life, almost my whole life, um, ever since I could really start walking. I remember, I mean, I guess I'd say one of my favorite goals is at the Dynamo Showcase. I scored a goal from half field, but, you know, which was pretty cool. And it was from a little over half field. Um, that was probably one of you know my favorite goals, and in that same showcase in the 90th minute, I think we were up by one, and the goalie went up. For, the other team's goalie went up for a corner kick. Uh, I stayed high a little bit. Um, we ended up getting the ball. Um, Alfie, one of my teammates, plays it out, threw ball perfectly over to the last defender, and it was just me and him. And obviously, there was no goalie in the net. Um, we got just to the edge of the box. I act like I was going to shoot. He, sl- he slid nice. and, uh, and then I tapped it in and it was pretty cool because the, we were the U18s and the U17s were right behind the goal and we all just celebrated and then, and it was a cool moment. I know, uh, we all think about it, you know, every once in a while and reminisce on that. We talk about it still. And I think that was probably, you know, one of my favorite moments at the club level. Let's get let's get one last thing for the pod. What do you hope to achieve by April of 22? What's the goal that you hope to set for yourself? The goal I have for the season is to win the championship with the independence. And then obviously um, a personal goal would be, I think I want to reach double digits in uh, whether it's goals or assists combined. And uh, long term, obviously at the end of the season is to be champions here. Let's let's make it happen. Let's do it, Marcel. Yeah, I'm ready. Thank you so much for your time, man. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the interview. Thanks yep. so much, and uh, have a good day. All right, you too. Thanks.